Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we are in a few days to the end of the month of October, just two days. The month of October ends tomorrow. Praise God. And you know, every month we usually have a prayer and fasting meeting breaking into the first of the month. So we, we start on the eve, 12 midnight, uh, like tomorrow. I'm telling you now, so you prepare for this. 12 midnight tomorrow and then throughout the first we will be fasting and praying according to the watches so we start at 12 midnight and then 3 a.m 6 a.m 9 a.m 12 noon 3 p.m 6 p.m and then the final watch final prayer time for us will be 9 p.m we we'll pray for about one hour and during these meetings i get to share um, the things that the spirit of god is I'm looking at towards the month that we are entering into and God has been so faithful and merciful to us we've got testimonies uh, upon testimonies so I want to invite you if you haven't attended these meetings before or if you even if you've attended before I still want to invite you praise God so you have a great time of fellowshipping with us and then prayer and you know this is a month of prayer so let's crown it and trust the Spirit of God to do marvelous things in your life. And trust me, November is going to be a great month. Praise God. Yes, it's going to be a great month. So I've got a lot I want to share with you today. But then, before we start, just like we do every day on this broadcast, we make demand for our daily bread. I don't know what belongs to you for this month of October. Before the month ends, you've got to receive it. So with that mindset, can you make demand now for your daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I believe God that he is doing something in your life. Our team scripture, even as we begin to round out this, is Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. I've been sharing on this. I told you this. I can take a scripture and talk about that scripture for many days. Now that's because the Spirit of God opens it up to us. Praise God. And Jesus, verse 1, Luke, Luke chapter 18. And, and he spoke, he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. He spoke a parable to show. He spoke a parable to press the point. He spoke a parable to make them realize that men ought always to pray and not to faint. If you are fainting, it is proof you are not praying. It's as simple as that. There are no two ways about it. Oh, Pastor Tupo, you don't understand what's going on. I'm drowning. You are not praying. But I've been praying. I've been asking God to help me. Listen, there is a difference between complaining and praying. There's a different, there's a difference between um sulking and praying. Pray. People that pray have faith. Hebrews tells us anyone who comes to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who will diligently seek him. That's why someone like Daniel will pray for 21 days because he believed in God. You understand what I'm talking about? Why didn't he stop after day three, after four days, after six days, after 10 days, even after 20 days? Why didn't he stop? Because he believed the one he is praying to, hears him and answers prayers. So when you give up, that's why I said when you give up, you are not praying. Some people think prayer is just a magic word. No, Father, do this for me, chan chan. And then you go and watch whether God is going to do it. Prayer is a relationship. And you're dealing with a God who is alive. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of what we're talking about. You are dealing with a God who is super alive. Praise God. Who can talk to you. We don't serve a God that we just go before him and say, Oh God, I, I make all your requests and say, I hope he has heard me. Then let me go and check. No, we deal with a God who talks back to us. That's the whole essence of Christianity. 
we deal with a God who talks back to us. We are in a relationship with him. That's why I always tell people when you want to pray, the, the first prayer point that should come out, come up to your heart is, Lord, how do I pray about this? Yes, because you're dealing with the one who knows all things. See, you're dealing with the one who knows all things. And, and sometimes I, I've seen experiences where I want to pray about something. And then as I go down on my knees to pray, oh, however, I, you know, sometimes you stand to pray. Sometimes you lift up your hands. Sometimes you just lie down and, 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 and pray. The most important thing there is the consciousness that you are praying to a, to a God who is listening to you. You see that consciousness is what defines our prayer life. Yes. If that consciousness is missing, you are just doing a religious exercise. And a lot of people do that. They fast, but they don't really believe that God hears them. They hope that God has heard them, but they don't believe that God has heard them. So it's all in your attitude. I was telling you, as, as there are times I want to pray about something. I kneel down to pray and, and I'm just like, okay, Lord, so how do we go about this, this issue now? How do we pray about this issue? Then I'll hear the Lord say to me that you don't need to pray about that. I've already answered it. See? I've already answered it. Now if you want to pray for someone and God says, I've already answered it, what, what would you do? Lord, I've not seen it yet. So Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of No! No, not at all. If God says, I've already answered answered it then you give him thanks and then you begin to live and walk as though you understand what i'm saying he has answered it as as though you have seen it now that's because you've got the information inside that he have answered this thing already now that's that's why i said we are dealing with a god who hears and who participates when we pray so that's why we pray and he said why are you bothering yourself i've answered that now, oh okay Okay, but, no, but if God says he has answered, what do you want to say? Now you want to switch to complaining? Oh, God, I've not seen it yet. Oh, Lord, make me see it. Now, there are times you actually need to say, Lord, can you help me see? Maybe you're asking for something. You're praying for provision or, or you understand what I'm saying? And, and then you pray and God says, I've answered. I believe Daniel had this witness in his heart. That's what kept it. Now, that's one thing you need to understand. Prayer requires strength. And that strength cannot be your strength. Because if you apply your strength to prayer, you will be worn out. Yes. But prayer, uh, uh, prayer, prayer needs strength. And God is the provider of that strength. Now, when he provides you that strength from your inner man, that's what Paul was praying in Ephesians chapter 3. He, he said like that, that God will strengthen you in your inner in him and strengthen you with mind by his spirit in your inner man. Strength. We've talked about how angels come to strengthen you. So I'm praying and God says, but I've answered that already. Oh. Um, but I've not seen it yet. I said, you, you believe him and then you begin to give thanks. But then when you're dealing with something that, will be, that should be seen physically, what do you do? While you're giving thanks, you begin to say, okay, Lord, the problem is not from heaven. The problem is on this side. Can you show me? Can you, can you let me know? See? Can you open my eyes to see the way you have made this provision? Can you let me know where you have? You understand what I'm talking about? And then we act in faith, believing that we will have what we say and we will have it. That's what the Bible says. When you pray, believe that you have it and you shall have it. Now, a lot of times, see, those words, that's what Paul was talking about when he says, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So I find people who, who teach on prayer and then they go, Prayer of faith. See, when you pray the prayer of faith, you just pray it once. When you, say, and when you pray it once, you don't pray it again. So you just believe and you receive. Those things are mechanical. It doesn't work that way. 
The reason we pray, and you know, you know how you take something that is really practical and make it a theory, is wrong. And, and so, lots of people receive these teachings, but they don't get results. And then soon they begin to think this whole thing is a scam. See, because now I said, but pastor is not working. He said, keep believing, keep believing, keep believing. You see, if he didn't receive it, he didn't receive it. And the receiving of it is not in the physical. You see, the Holy Ghost is the doer of this work. It's not a, it's not a, it's not an academic exercise. There is the vitality of our work with God. It's the same thing with salvation. Someone say, and all that you need to be saved is to believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and confess with your mother God is that 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 uh, uh, confess with your mother Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from there. That's all the Bible says you need to be saved. Now you know that's not true. It's not as though it's not just oh I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from there. I confess with my mother Jesus is Lord. So because I said that I'm saved, come on now, even the devil would have been saved. <laughs> You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Praise God. The real truth is this. No man can say that Jesus is Lord by the whole, except by the Holy Spirit. Now walk up to the street and, and, and just say, hey, I'm carrying out an experiment. Can you say Jesus is Lord? You will, you will hardly find anybody who will... <laughs> Sorry, I can't say it. <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah. That's why the Bible said no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Say, say, I've met people who they couldn't open their mouth to say Jesus is Lord. Most likely, almost everybody you see can say Jesus is Lord. Now, does that mean they're automatically saved? Does that mean the Holy Ghost is powering them? He is talking about a deeper confession. When he says no man can say. That Jesus is Lord. No, he didn't say no man can speak that Jesus is Lord. When he says say, we say with our heart. We speak with our mouth. So the realization that Jesus is Lord, it's something that nobody can convince you of. What, what, what the scripture is talking about. It's not something a man will sit and explain and explain and explain and explain. And say, mm, now I understand. No, it's a conviction that wells in your spirit. You just realize that Jesus is Lord. Where is God? And, and he said, nobody can do that. Nobody can come to that realization nobody can come to that place where he says it in his heart now because the moment he says it he begins to live that way but then you know you have a lot of people who, who, who has come out for altar call maybe you had friends you, you maybe if you're a pastor you have seen this a lot someone who came out you preached and then the person came out for altar call and then you prayed oh the person was feeling ah pastor oh thank you lord thank you lord the person goes back and a few months down the line you're wondering what kind of human being are you? They say, maybe they got saved, but they went back. They never got saved. Do you know what salvation is? You know, sometimes when people go, all those things people talk about, oh, grace message, oh, if you're saved, you can never lose your salvation. And you know, someone asked me that question one time. I said, but, but truly, is it possible to lose your salvation? My, my response was very simple. Let's first of all know that you've got into salvation. <laughs> See, before I start thinking if you lose it, let's first of all be sure you've gotten it. See, because it's so easy to talk these days. And then you begin to quote scripture to prove, come on now. You know things don't work that way. You know you're deceiving yourself. This thing is real. There's a vitality. There's a vital part of it. This thing is something that we live, not just something that we, we, we say with our mouth. So when he says, when he prays, believe whatsoever thing you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. So it's not, I pray, Father, I receive this in Jesus' name. Now I believe, I receive it, I have it. There is something that happens in your heart. Now that's the part nobody can explain to you. Yes, nobody can explain that. You see, when that confidence comes in, <laughs> nobody can explain there is no step one step two step three to it no it's the work of the holy spirit if you have the holy spirit in you 
You might be praying for something for so long. You Oh man, you can be praying for something for two weeks, for one week, for four days. You just pray. You know, now I don't mean or oh, every every second. Lock up by number goes until four days. No, you 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 can pray, Lord. This thing hasn't come yet, Father. I receive this thing. I know you can give it to me, Lord. I've made a request to you. And I believe you can give it to me. That's why I'm waiting on you. Amen. You know, sometimes, see, there, there are lots of misconceptions. Now, the, the people who began to teach these things, they had honesty in their hearts. Please don't get me wrong. They were sincere. They were honest in their heart. But you see, like every other thing, when we when we use something for a while, then we begin to see that ah, this was not the real thing. You see, you understand what I'm saying? So so we've taught a lot of things, but when you truly begin to walk with the Lord, you begin to realize a lot more. See, so someone, for example, you are in a service, and someone comes up to share a testimony and says. I was in that service and maybe you've heard this before and when pastor was preaching i just got up and took my my khaki i went to sew it and brethren do you know three days later i received a brand new car and someone else was like is it like that ah i found the way i'm waiting for pastor to preach now pastor that's where he stand up carries his khaki and then he doesn't get any car. Like, like, okay, what's going on here? Three days have passed. Three weeks have passed. Three months have passed. Ah, what's going on here? You then you start thinking, maybe that person was telling me that. What the person may not have told you is that they heard the voice of the Lord, and that's what makes the difference. Some might be bold to say, others may not be bold to say because the fact that you don't know how God speaks doesn't mean he doesn't speak to you. So sometimes it's a deep impression in your heart. You just know. And sometimes you realize that that person who got up that day to, to do that thing, to take an action, God has been dealing with that person for a few months. So that was the day the person came to the point of like, you know what, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. Just like I was sharing about Hannah. Hannah in the Bible. You would not know. But for a long time, the Lord had been dealing with her to make that declaration, to make that vow that this child, when she gets it, she would give him unto the Lord all the days of her life. That was a struggle Hannah was going through for a while. So not because God just shut her womb. The Bible said God shut her womb. He didn't just shut her womb because he's God. I'm God. I can't do what I was. So I shut her womb. I opened this other person's womb. No. God wanted her to make that vow because it has been written concerning her that her son will serve the Lord in the capacity of a prophet. But now God wanted her. See, but she had something different in her mind. And like I said, many times we struggle with things like this. So that day she came to that point where she said, Okay, Lord, if you're truly going to give me a son, this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it up to you. And that was the day she came to oneness with God. Another person reads her story, say, Oh, I've seen the pathway of having children. Oh God, just like Hannah prayed, Lord, if you will give me a male child, I will give him to you. Uh, does he need him? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> does he need him? And then you've prayed that prayer for years. God is not, God doesn't seem to be answering you. Find your own. Find your own. You see, I'll tell you this in our round of It's so easy to get things done. It's so easy to get things done. The only thing you need to get things done is to wake up and pray. 
and make sure you're praying. If you pray, if you can just pray, you'll get your answer. My time is up. Praise God. I believe God is saying something to you. If you will just obey, align your mind with Him, you will see the results that you desire. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.